it's the season finale of the Old Spice Report. We've got tons of great prizes to give away. We've got the latest from Vegas where the Motorola Zoom was the talk of the town. Our experts weigh in on what makes this product a must-have. MLG Pro Gandhi drops in to discuss all of the off-season trades going on around the league. And MLG CEO Sundance D. Giovanni stops by for a look ahead at 2011. Strap in and hold on tight. It's time for the Old Spice Report. What's up, everybody? I'm Shibby. That's Puckett. You guys picked an excellent night for tuning in. Oh, for sure. As you guys may have noticed, we've been plugging this show all week long on the MLG website because tonight is the massive giveaway. Yes, that's right. We're giving away tons of free stuff. And, you know, all you have to do this episode is tweet at MLG Pro and answer the question correctly. And you win a prize. Yeah, it's pretty, right? pretty, pretty simple stuff. Yeah, we're going to be doing some mini games and some random awesome stuff for you guys, so just be ready. Yeah, so when we ask you a question, make sure you have your Twitter window open and your fingers ready to party because it's going to be the first answer. That's correct. We'll win the prize, and we'll be giving out all kinds of stuff throughout the entire show. And, guys, we're going to be starting off the show with the pre-show contest we held mm -hmm. on the website and on Twitter. We asked you guys to retweet a special MLG post telling your friends about tonight's show. And tonight we have two lucky winners who will be walking home with two JC Petting t-shirts and a lids hat. All right, that's awesome. All right. And the first winners are Daniel Hyland and Monkey Todd. Congratulations, Woo! guys. Daniel and Monkey Todd, great stuff. We have a lot more <laughs> giveaways to come, guys. Lots of great contests throughout the show. So make sure your Twitter window is open and you're ready to go. Later on, we'll be talking with MLG CEO Sundance D. Giovanni about what's in store for MLG in 2011. Mm -hmm. So if you guys have any questions for Sundance, make sure you send them to us right now to Old Spice Report at MLGPro.com. But right now, it's time for the scope out. Speaking of awesome prizes, last week at the Consumer Electronics Show in Vegas, Motorola Zoom was awarded the best one was awarded the prize for best gadget, the tablet which will operate on the highly anticipated Android 3.0 Honeycomb OS is set to release in May. Motorola is said to be shipping over 800,000 units for the first quarter of 2011, and everyone's saying this latest addition to the tablet market could be the number one challenger to the iPad throne. Now, guys, the iPad dominated the holiday season, but there's lots to love about this newest product from Motorola. Everyone hesitates to buy the first version of any new gadget, hoping that the bugs and glitches will be worked out. To combat this issue, Motorola has offered the 4.0 upgrade for free when it becomes available. Mm -hmm. Ship now, fix later, whatever. Dude, eh. free 4.0, that's pretty sweet stuff. Reminds me of some video games that came out recently. Anyway, moving on, <laughs> Apple announced that on Tuesday that the wait is finally over for Verizon and the iPhone. Puckett, considering the service issues in the past that people had with AT&T, what will this announcement mean for the people, for Apple, Verizon, and the customers? Yeah, consumers. Well, you know, basically, <laughs> what it means is everybody wins here. Everyone except AT&T, of course. With nearly 100 million subscribers on the network, this will mean big business for both Apple and Verizon. The Verizon iPhone will be available early next month, so save up your money, and will operate on Verizon's 3G <coughs> EVDU network. The one thing that may be in AT&T's favor here is that their product will have faster download speeds, and people will, well, you have to wonder how many people are going to be willing to break out of their contract to jump right. ship to Verizon. But either way, props to Verizon. They have to feel really good after making Apple come to them. Yeah, well, in gaming news, 2011 is set to be a great year for single-player games. Some of the most anticipated single-player games are Legend of Zelda, Skyward Sword, Mass Effect 3, Batman Arkham City, Uncharted 3, Drake's Deception, and of course, Portal 2. Puckett, what are you looking forward to this year? Well, you know me, man. I'm looking forward to the multiplayer game titles like Brink and Gears of War 3. But out of the single-player titles you mentioned, I have to go with the new Zelda game on this one. I mean, come on. It's the prequel to Ocarina of Time, which is one of my favorite single-player games ever. You can ride horses, shoot archery, go Fish. fishing, get yeah. destroyed by Fish. impossible <laughs> puzzles for days on end. Well, good luck fishing. Man. Yeah, I'm going to have a great time. Man's got to eat. <laughs> All right, one of the other products creating some significant buzz at the Consumer Electronics Show was the Atrix 4G. 
with more on the 4G and the CES, fresh off his recent USO trip to Africa, is MLG writer Matt Betts. What's going on? Matt, how was the trip, man? Oh, it was pretty amazing, you guys. We uh, went over to Ghana and Liberia in Africa, and I uh, did two shows at the embassy in Ghana and one in Liberia. It was awesome. Shibby, you know what I'm thinking? <clears throat> Contest time? Wait, yes. seriously? Like, I just, <laughs> I told you guys, you know, I did shows for the what? embassies over there. Might, maybe a little com No, 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 we're thinking about, yeah, yeah, we're talking yeah, yeah. about contest. Oh, okay. Contest. Yeah, right. It's time for the Angry Matt giveaway, here. guys. Yeah. <laughs> I and love giveaways. And this is how it's going to work, Angry Matt. <laughs> the first person to tweet which two countries Matt just said he visited will win oh, an wow. awesome brand That's new tough. MLG the, you Astro Wheel of Scout Gaming Backpack. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's tough if you can't spell. Oh, yeah, Matt, you, you were saying something? <laughs> yeah, uh, well, you know, while I was gone, the CES happened in Vegas, and, you know, people talk about which products are a must-have. In case you don't know, the CES is the world's largest electronics convention, and these days people love technology that allows them to reach out and touch someone or themselves. Think about it. Without a cell phone, that whole Brett Favre situation would have been just another a classic old-fashioned sexual harassment case. Electronics have become our number one way of giving and receiving attention. Use your cell phone to talk, to text, to email, and to learn about other people around the world. The Zoom, the Atrix 4G, the iPad, iPhone, iPod, and the most ironic of the bunch, the iTouch. All of these portable products designed to keep you in touch with others who aren't close enough to actually touch, and even if they were, you'd probably detest the fact that they're sitting too close to you anyway. I mean, don't get me wrong, I don't like people either, but all this, you know, all this technology is based on the idea that we want to communicate with people, but just not be around them. You know, last week I was in Africa, in Ghana and Liberia, beautiful countries with so much to offer in the way of food, culture, scenery, and art. The people there were so happy, and I looked around, you know, I was like, where's the flat screen or the iPad? And, you know, like, what was the cause of all of it? And get this, they didn't have any of that stuff. Apparently, they were just happy for being happy. I mean, I even asked a few of them, like, what they thought, like, the must-have product from CES was. And I didn't really understand any of their responses, although one of the men may have said Zoom. I can't be sure. The point is, it just seems a lot of people out there are just happy just because. What are you guys doing? Like, were you even listening to what I was saying? <laughs> oh, sorry. Well, yeah, yeah. I was in Africa. It? Yeah, congrats, man. Angry Birds? Oh, technology. What was it? Who were you talking to? I was just sexting a Not little bit. Not even listening? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't All send right. a picture. Of, All right. Yeah. <laughs> well, Matt, thank you. Great rant. But, yeah. guys, let's get to the stuff you care about. It's the prizes, and now it's time to award the prize <laughs> for the Angry Matt giveaway. <laughs> Angry Matt. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> just so mad. The first prize tonight, that's not a pre-contest, is going to <laughs> I.I. Xander. Congratulations, uh, buddy. I yep, love congratulations. That You're not mad. <laughs> Enjoy all. your all brand right. new Astro Scout bag. I use mine every day uh, to and from work, yep. so hope it's you enjoy awesome. it. Well, coming up on the Old Spice Report, producer George Rudai went over to uh, Johnny Utah's here in New York City for a little bull riding action. And we want to know, how long do you think he held on for? Guys, the what? first two viewers who tweet the correct answer will win a pair of these sweet MLG Gunner Optics. We got two pairs to pass around tonight. And we'll be back with the bull riding video right after this. All right, so before the break, we showed you a video of OSR producer George Rudai about to ride the bull at Johnny Utah's, but let's see what happened. Oh. <laughs> 2.25 seconds, George? <laughs> Are you kidding me? Talk about fail. <laughs> it's one move from the bull. Well, congratulations. I just got our winners in. We got I Am Left Handed and Casey Plexi. Congratulations, guys. You both won a pair of Gunner Optics. Nice. Well, originally, we were supposed to talk to Gandhi. He was going to be on the show, but, you know, he ran into some problems with the snow, knocked out his internet, all that stuff. Mother Nature destruction, yeah. man. Destroyed. And uh, we're going to be discussing team changes, but joining now on Skype instead of Gandhi is MLG pro player Flame Sword. Upgrade! Mikey Chavez. What's up, dude? Mike, are you there, my friend? Yeah, oh, I'm the here. internet. I'm here. Oh, he's oh, here now. He's here now. Sometimes we Skype, you never know. 
I am here. All right, so Mike, what is going on with the team changes at a pro level right now? Um, they're pretty much settling down now. Uh, Instinct, SQ, FB, and uh, Trigger's Down are pretty much set. And now you just have wild cards like Hysteria. You don't know where he's really going to go, so he could cause a storm to some team. So you're going to have to be watching this, uh, the pros for a while because, I mean, a team could uh, form with him any time now. So those three teams that you just mentioned, who are on those? who's on those teams right now? Uh, Instinct, you've got a... Uh, Tots and uh, T2 instead of uh, LMI and Cloud anymore. FB is still the same roster. Us, we're still the same roster. And uh, Trump uh, kicked off uh, and picked up uh, Hines and uh, LMI now. So those are four teams that will not drink. All right. Well, out of the teams who formed, who do you think will be the most explosive team at the opener? Uh, I'm pretty excited to see uh, Instinct. I just finished playing uh, some Reach with uh, Roy yesterday, and he logged in 81 game games last night. So, I mean, they're going to be the most practice team for sure. So, they should be exciting to watch. Yeah, well, if you're putting in work like that, you should definitely see some good results. Um, all right, so the teams, they're doing a lot of changing, but which ones are you, are you thinking that are not quite done yet? Like, what, where can you expect to see some more changes, if at all? Well, All right. Oh, Skype fail. Oh, all right. Skype, well, fail. Skype fail. Can we give him a quick rundown of what went down there? I yeah. know it's hard to hear Flame yeah. Sword, but I was taking notes, guys. Triggers down. They are now consisting of Neighbor, Best Man, Elmite, and Hines. Instinct is Roy and Lunchbox with T Squared and Tots. Cloud rejoined Believe the Hype. He'll be playing with Snipe Down, Maniac, and Demon D. FB and SQ staying the same. And uh, looks like there's a lot of good free agents out there. And I want to give a quick shout out to two names that have really been surprising me. I've been watching some Halo Reach video. Royal 2 and Ninja. These guys are on Swagger Like Us and Victoria's Secret. These guys are causing some huge upsets amongst our pro teams. So shout out to you guys. Definitely yeah. looking forward to the Halo Reach You're season. You're like a note taker from the future. I know. I prepare. <laughs> You're the man. <laughs> All right. Well, um, Pucket, I think it's time for another old-fashioned mini contest let's give away more prizes baby all right and we're gonna play a classic game of how many fingers am i holding behind my back just one hand just one hand all right so take that one to ten and make it one to five <laughs> guys for the winner right, who I'll tweets two. the okay two hands now the winner who tweets the correct response is going to be winning the mlg grab bag filled to the brim with all kinds of exciting stuff that people from around the office donated. That's right, so show us your tweets. How many fingers am I holding up? We'll have the answer right after this edition of Stuff We Found on the Computer. Hi, I'm Reckless, and I'm a f the sign up. <laughs> signs, signs are stronger than McDonald's these days, apparently. Oh, oh man. That's a fat joke. Sorry. <laughs> Jimmy, how many fingers are you holding up? Four. Four? <laughs> All right. All right, guys. Well, I guess it's time to check the tweets and see if we have a winner. Apparently, the winner for the MLG grab bag is KBC. Congrats, right. buddy. Congratulations. Grab yourself some grab bag. All right. Well, the grab bag may actually be the best thing we're giving away tonight. It is. By far the most awesome gift tonight. If you want to see what's in the MLG grab bag, head on over to MLG.TV. Not yet, but soon. And you can see <laughs> what is in the MLG grab yeah, bag. Yeah, wait until the show's over. <laughs> Guys, It'll be up after the show's over. You totally. Know. The next prize is up for grabs, and we will award the first two lucky winners of this next contest with a team pass to a future MLG Pro Circuit event. $260 value here, so it's a big one. Oh, yes. All right. The contest is which of these three MLG staffers, Lennox, Nexi, or Joker, can hook up an Xbox the fastest? Get your tweets in. We'll be right back. Before the break, we asked you which MLG staffer could hook up an Xbox the fastest. Well, it's time to find out who won. All right, let's see it. Right. 
<laughs> Congrats to Nexi for winning the contest. Looks like they're cheating with Lennox a little bit there. He fell asleep. Yeah. For Nexi's efforts, he receives absolutely nothing. But two lucky viewers will be taking home team passes to the 2011 Pro Circuit event, the $260 value. And guys, our winners are Sir Hem 293 and Devin Phillips. Is that it? That's correct. Congratulations, guys. We'll see you on the Pro Circuit next year. And moving on, guys, we got to talk about this next piece. This I love cool. it. It's Very cool. cool stuff. In New York City, people are doing crazy things 24 hours a day, and the guys who trick are no exception. And no, not those kind of tricks, Jimmy. Kind of a tricks. few days ago, Joker and I headed out Dang to it. East Rockaway, New York to check out some of New York's finest tricksters. Check this out. My name is Mike McGuire. Right now we're at Five Star Sports and Entertainment Academy. We're at a uh, tricking session. The way I like to define tricking is it's a, a combination of kicking, flipping, and twisting. Most of it is usually Taekwondo kicking, Wushu, wushu stuff, Capoeira stuff, you know, and then they just evolve it from there. A freestyle form of acrobatics. It has some martial arts, it has some gymnastics, uh, some break dancing elements. Most of all, it's just really fun. Uh, tricking started through sport karate, a karate circuit called NASCA, and basically the competitors in the in the uh, tournament wanted to make their forms look better. A little free form thing where everybody would try and you know kind of one up each other, so people would add a little bit of gymnastics to their forms, and eventually everybody just kept trying to one up each other. So you would have like like let's say a, a karate form, a typical karate form, but he would spice it up by learning let's say gymnastics. You'll learn how to do a round off. Uh, flash kick, okay, and add it into the form, and then people saw, you know, other pe competitors doing that, and because they don't want to be bested by, like, you know, their rival, they themselves just start learning from, like, you know, capoeira, wushu, you know, uh, gymnastics, you know, a little bit from breakdancing, and it just grew and grew. Everybody went bigger and harder, and now we have tricking. It takes place everywhere, it, uh, all over the world. There are people in Finland, people in Sweden, people in Russia, people everywhere tricking. You know, all over Europe, all over the United States and Canada. Like we just hosted the Dreadnought Gathering. We had people from Norway, Australia, London, Finland, Denmark, you know, everywhere and people all across the United States, so. At this point in time, like 2011, like tricking has gotten to the point where um, it's like a parabola, like the, the martial artists, they just want like, they were staying away from each other because, you know, it was really different, but then now everybody's all doing it. Like martial artists, backyard tricksters. Trick battles are, are uh, really cool because now we get a chance to really test our skills against each other. It'll be a back and forth, kind of like a b-boy battle. You know, there's different type of styles, like some guys can be just playful with it, like, you know, um, just messing around, having fun. Um, some guys come at you really hard. I'd say the most common is uh, two people, you know, one person on each side, one person goes, the other person goes as a combo or a single move. Usually have three judges and they just point to whatever side they like better, and it's usually uh, best out of three. I would love to see it in something like the X Games, you know, something like that, because we already have battles, we have gatherings. Um, yeah, I see it getting really big because like anything, like skateboarding, like um, uh, breakdancing, like if you have people that like to compete, you're gonna have a competition, you know? I remember when I first started, you'd mention tricking to somebody and they had no idea what you're talking about. We just want to spread the sport, we want it to be known, you know? Uh, we want people to, when they see us tricking, to know it's called tricking and, you know, not just some flips that you're doing, you know what I mean? Hopefully you'll get to see more competitions, you know, in the future. I want people on the street just to know what it is. We want it to be respected. Dude, that was pretty cool. Dude, it was so yeah. awesome. I have to give a big shout out to Mike, Jay, and Jim, the guys who helped us out in that video. Honestly, the coolest part of going out and checking out the tricking activity is that it's definitely one of the most up and coming sports right now. It's gaining popularity pretty fast, but what it really reminded me of was MLG back in its infancy. Before there was big competitive video game tournaments, there was small stuff going on. That's where tricking's at right now, and I think in a couple of years, they're gonna see explosive growth just like we did here at MLG. Best of luck to the trickers, and if you guys are interested in learning how to trick, it's great exercise. They're putting on clinics every Saturday at Five Star Gym out in East Rockaway in New York. Do some Google work, only 10 bucks a lesson. Great price for uh, some awesome times. You know what all that tricking reminds me of? No. Madiz is a Rochambeau champion. Rochambeau? Yeah, for uh, normal people, they like to call it rock, paper, scissors. But as a diehard, 
Rochambeau. Dude, but. I would crush you in rock, paper, scissors. Looks like we got a little contest, huh? And what are we giving away for this contest? Game time with me in Halo Reach. And don't you think we should give them something they might actually want? Yeah, keep talking, Mr. Talkative. Let's I, go. I think I will do. All right, guys, it's time to find out who do you think will win in Rochambeau. Rock, paper, scissors. Let's be honest, Shibby. Who is it me? <laughs> Rose is it Shibby? He claims to be a champ, but I dominate everyone in this game. I don't know about that, man. All right. Well, Rochambeau, it's coming up after another short break of stuff awesome, with time nice. on the computer. Yeah. Let's see it. All right. <laughs> Dude, behind the back, granny toss from half court. All day. That's pretty darn epic. All day. You ready? You I'm look ready. ready to go. I'm so ready. <laughs> you settle down. <laughs> Let's go. We'll get it done. Come on. Best two out there. All right, rock, paper, scissors, shoot, right? On shoot. All right. All right. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Ah! One, one. All right. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. One, one. All, All right. right, this is for game time with Shibby. The best prize of the night. <laughs> All right, let's go. All right, ready? Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Ah! Oh, All right, time. The suspense builds. Hold Bring on. Bring it. I'm throwing Come it on. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Oh, die again. <laughs> Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Oh! Ah! Defeating the champion. Ah! Did you have any doubts? <laughs> MLG who? We have a winner already. It hurts. All right, I just got news. MLG Zadius, you are the winner for picking me. Smart kid. I want to nice redo. Work, buddy. Good luck carrying Shibby, by the way. That's going to be tough. Yeah, <laughs> no problem there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, All before right. we head to break, let's set up our next giveaway. It's trivia time. If you think you know the answer, send us a tweet. Shibby first started working for MLG in 2006. But we want to know what year did Puckett start working at MLG? Tweet your answers. The winners will receive 50 Game Battles credits and an HD pass for the entire 2011 season. And do you think we should give two winners here? I don't see why not. Two prizes, two winners. We'll be right back. Before the break, we asked you, when did Puckett start working for MLG? That's right, guys. And the answer is 2004. February 22nd, 2004 was my first MLG event mm -hmm. working for Sundance and Sepsa with Clap. It was awesome stuff. And Shibby, we got our winners. Congrats to JTW2012 and Joshua Crazer. Both of you guys will be winning 50 Woo! Game Battles credits and an HD stream pass for the entire 2011 season. Awesome. Congratulations, guys. So, Puckett, this is our season finale, right? Yeah. And it's also our 10th episode? Duh. Well, <laughs> speaking of the number 10, let's talk about the top 10 moments from 2010. So many 10s. I know. Let's start off with another one. All Starting right. off at number 10 is the Dr. Pepper Ultimate Gaming House Season 2. Another great season. We got to hook up five lucky winners last year. And we'll be doing it once again in 2011. Bringing it back in 2011. I love it. At number nine, we have the Doritos Combine. Guys, last year, Doritos helped us set out to find the best amateur players from around the country. Shibby and I got a chance to visit all new cities, hang out with attendees, teach seminars, and scout some of the best up-and-coming amateur players and rising talent in the league. Mm -hmm. And speaking of up-and-coming players, at number eight, finding new talent. Amish Acorns, Adrenaline, Calm, a really good noob, and Assault. These guys definitely made, a, definitely made a name for themselves this year, and I'm looking forward to their future success in the league. Yeah, props to those guys for their hard work. At number seven, we got to go with record-setting numbers in 2010. We had 10.9 million live streams over the course of the season, with 3 million of those streams coming from our Dallas championships. Dude, I remember back when we first started MLG when we had 2,000 people watching VOD. To hit 10.9 million is absolutely huge. Ridiculous. And at number six, MLG's 50th event. This definitely was a huge milestone for MLG. I was so proud to be a part of it. Shout out to all the fans and MLG staff members that make it all happen. 
Now let's do 50 more. I love it. At number five, we have MLG's branding exposure. We were all over the place last year with the MLG, MLG brand. We are on Astro products, Doritos bags, Hot Pocket boxes, big packages, and we also sold MLG gear around the country in malls and stores like Hot Topics and Lid Stores. Mm -hmm. All around the world, taking Take, over. Taking over, baby. And at number four, we were given our own show, The Old Spice Report. This was something that we had been talking about since college. The show has been a blast and tons of great experiences all year long. Well, and thank you guys for being with us through it all. Yeah, the Puckett and Shibby Show, lots of fun. <laughs> At number three, guys, we have the addition of StarCraft II to the pro circuit. Absolutely huge stuff. MLG hosted the first ever North American StarCraft II tournament at a Raleigh event. And since then, I've been getting more and more into StarCraft II. I have to say, dude, this might be the best game we have on the circuit Ooh. right now. And I'm super pumped to have it coming back in 2011. All right. And at number two, we have Ogre 2 winning the Halo 3 National Championship. Seriously amazing. He is a national champion at Halo 1, Halo 2, and in Halo 3. The winningest player of all time. This was a great moment for him and MLG. He certainly established himself as a legend in this league. Greatest of all time, man. And nope. now it's time for the number one, and I think we both agree with this one. It has to be the naming of MLG's Sundance D. Giovanni as our CEO. Sundance, one of the co-founders, was there since the beginning. And since he stepped in as CEO, it really feels like we're back to our roots. We're community-focused, making sure that everyone is having as much fun as we do. And coming to work, <laughs> let me tell you, it's a blast every day, and it's all thanks to Very you, lucky. Sundance. So many great moments, and we truly owe it all to one man, MLG CEO Sundance D. Giovanni. And for the final giveaway of the evening, we've got Sundance involved. It's coming up after this quick commercial break. We'll be right back. It's been a great show so far. We've given out some incredible prizes to some awesome people. But now it's time for our final contest. It's the Sundance Ambush. Now, Sundance got a bunch of new Nerf guns for Christmas, and he decided to test them out on one unlucky MLG employee. Who did Sundance Ambush? Well, was it Lies, Linz, Jordan, or Shibby? Well, tweet your answers now. For the winner, we have the ultimate prize pack of the night, an Astro Gaming A30 headset, speaker tags, and a mix amp. Wow. All of that. But before we get to that video, guys, we're going to have to talk to the office assassin himself about what's in store for MLG in 2011. And joining us right now live is MLG CEO Sundance DJ Ivani. Hey. Sundance, how you doing? I'm good, dude. Thanks for having me back. Your hair's a little bit longer this time. Yeah. Just a little. Got a haircut just for you guys. I appreciate oh, that. Well, Sundance, <laughs> we had to bring you on the show to close out this season to talk about the upcoming pro circuit season we're going to have at MLG. Is there anything you can give us uh, right off the bat? Um, yeah, so we have, uh, we've been working really hard in the off season to, to change up the spectator experience. So what you're used to in an MLG event, you're not going to see anymore. And um, we're pretty excited about it, actually, because for the first time ever, we're going to have all of our games on the same level, uh, you know, just produce really well, like great experience. And I'll, I'll tell you what, like, honestly, I'm excited to see how people react because it's the first time we've pressed refresh in quite a while. Be like walking back into the venue in like 2006. Exactly. Like back when you saw that for the first time ever. That's awesome. Brand new feeling. Can't wait to see what happens. Dave Elliott and crew, they always hook it up. Sundance, we got to ask, what's in store for the new streams? There's a lot of buzz around the office of what's going on with the streaming system. So we're, we're trying to do the same thing there that we've done with the Spectator experience, which is to take what you see for uh, you know, a certain shooter that's not Halo and StarCraft II and elevate that so you have a, a quality production across the board. Um, I think you'll see... Higher quality, obviously, you're going to see more um, higher, uh, higher definition on the stream, but also just the, the presentation is going to be much better across the board. Awesome, and I know we're hiring some new talent to help us out with that. Excited yep. to work wanna, with some new people. Yeah, I'm excited too. Woo. Yeah, it's people good. to the team. Teamwork. Teamwork, absolutely. I, I want to talk about the MLG app that just released in yep. the Droid Store. It, Right five minutes before I went on air, you told me, yeah, I had, the app. Had, I was had like, no what? idea about that or else we'd be talking about it all show. <laughs> but um, we've also got one for the, uh, the Apple uh, App Store. Uh, that one's being reviewed right now. should be out in about a week. But it's, it's pretty cool, actually. We did it with uh, uh, this application developer called Mobile Roadie. Um, and what you're able to do in the app is see video 
uh, you're able to tweet, you're able to uh, get news feeds, and there's uh, basically commenting that goes on in the app. So it's just the beginning. We've got a lot planned, but uh, I'm pretty excited about it. I, you know, I've got an iPhone, but uh, you know, folks with the Droid download it, and it looks pretty good. I'm excited to check it out. MLG app is out. It's out. I've Finally been dreaming here. of this moment for years. This is awesome. Um, Sunnet's big question here from the PC community. With the success that we saw in StarCraft and the success that they're definitely seeing over in Korea, are there any plans to expand the bracket and make SC a little bit bigger? Um, I think, you know, I don't want to get into specifics because the league is going to come up with the announcement later this, uh, later this month, actually, before we go into February. But our plans are to support StarCraft II uh, as big and broad as we can. And that includes both at our, our tournaments, plus also finding folks out there who are doing more grassroots events. Uh, you know, Team Liquid comes to mind, maybe EG. But one of the things we really want to do is we want to try and, you know, we know Korea's got that on lock right now. They've got all the money, they've got the TV deals and everything. But there's no reason why we can't grow it here. I think domestic Domestically, StarCraft II has as much potential as any title we've ever seen. And I'm excited to get the best players who aren't over in Korea to our events and maybe some of those guys to come back like they did last year. But, you know, I, I see a big future for us there internationally as well. Possibly partnering with some of the folks over in Korea is something we've talked about. Um, but our goal, as with anything that we do, is to do it the biggest and best we possibly can. So you're going to see us do a lot more with StarCraft this coming year. Very awesome. cool stuff. Well, at the start of the show, we open it up to the viewers to submit some questions. Are you ready for the tough ones? Sure. <laughs> Putting them on the hot seat. Sunday isn't go. allowed to talk about <coughs> everything, but we we'll see what he can tell us. Well, this one came from about 250 people, but I'll ask it from Brian. Where's the opener? Please answer dot, dot, dot. Love your hair, by the way. Well, thank you, Brian. <laughs> uh, that's not weird. Uh, so the opener is uh, it's in a city we've been to before. It's not on the East Coast, and it's not on the West Coast. Uh, and that's pretty much as close as I can get to it. You may be able to fill in the blanks Somewhere there. around Somewhere here. Somewhere that general area. 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 Um, <laughs> it's going to be a big event. It's going to be, you know, very large for us, obviously, and it's coming up pretty soon. But at the end of the month, we'll have all the details. My goal is to try and get out all the information for all the events, all the dates, and all the locations in one package, and, and we're, we're pretty close to being there. Uh, Scotty asks, what are your major goals for MLG in 2011? Uh, 2011 is a year of growth for us. I think it's about audience acquisition. It's about bringing new people into the fold. Um, you know, you guys have been here for a long time, but believe it or not, there are a lot of people out there who don't know about us yet. So uh, we need to use things like StarCraft II and New Shooter, Black in the name, uh, you know, and, and Halo Reach to help us grow that audience. So all the fans who are out there watching, all the fans who play in matches, who come to the events or watch those live streams, if you take it upon yourself to introduce two or three people this year to what MLG is, and not just for the hardcore player, we're going to be diversifying our content offering. We're going to be adding some new things to the mix. If you can do that, then we'll end up right where we need to be, which is growing the audience, staying true to what we're all about, which is competition, and having a good time. You know, you've spoken about the membership program a couple times before. Um, is there anything new on that or anything more you want to share about the membership program? There's so much that I want to share. Um, Please, <laughs> come on. The one thing I'll say is, is come April or so, uh, you are going to be able to become a premium member at MLG. Now, I can't get into too many of the specifics about what that's going to mean, but it's going to make changes to your profile. It's going to give you changes in terms of what are available to you as a community member. It may not be for everybody, but all of the stuff that's wrapped into the premium membership will still be available to people. But let's say we do really well with premium membership and we get a lot of people to sign on for it. It's going to allow us to do things that we haven't been able to do in the past, like raise prize money, uh, get pros more opportunities to earn revenue for themselves uh, so that you know, this can be a professional league. And most importantly, invest back in the product, invest back in the things that the fans want to see. So um, it sounds a little strange saying it, but there will be a, a premium membership, but it's for good reason. Uh, we think it's time. We think we're big enough. We think the community can, can definitely help. So um, there'll be more details uh, as we get closer to it, but you're going to be able to buy a, a card in a lot of retail locations. There'll be a digital membership as well that you can buy online. And it's going to plug into all the things that we do for basically uh, both the, you know, the, the hardcore, but also just the competitive player. It won't just be for the folks who want to go pro. That sounds huge. It's amazing. I certainly hope so. Kind of cool <laughs> stuff. Um, I like your brain. Sonny, got a few more questions here from the community. From Danny, it looks like, will, with the pick of a StarCraft II, do you think other PC titles have a future at MLG? He's thinking about League of Legends right now. Okay, so League of Legends is an obvious example. Um, you know, we're looking at it. I think one of the things that shifted for us is, uh, in the beginning, when we started the company, 
we had to fight off competition from folks, uh, you know, who had uh, TV deals and, and deep pockets. And, and so we really focused on what we were best at, and that was console. We broadened out in the past couple of years and seen some success there. So I don't want to say no. We're not just a console-only league, without a doubt. League of Legends is something that's been mentioned as a, one of our pickup feature games that we're talking about doing this year. Um, and there are other titles out there. No, not Counter-Strike 1.6. We're not going to do that, so just don't even ask. But there are other things that may happen. Um, the difference for us between where we used to be in the past is that we're going to expand uh, intelligently, not aggressively where it's just crazy. We're going to try and have a plan behind it. And internationally, there's an opportunity to do more on the PC side. And so <coughs> that maybe if we're doing more internationally, we might do more on the PC side. I hope we go international. Yeah, I'd like to go overseas. Take me to Barcelona. All right, yes, so Nance, final two questions. This one's <laughs> coming from a hater, Stephanie. Why on <laughs> earth would he give Shibby and Puckett their own show? I still don't know the answer That's to that. That's a great actually. question. <laughs> I thought it was a great idea. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, you know, we've had this idea for a long time, and you guys haven't screwed it up too bad, so. Yes. Such a giver. All right, Sundance, <laughs> last one is coming from Easy Cheese, who asks, Really? Can you give me any hints of who got shot? I really need a new pair of Astros. Uh, all right, well, his job on the day-to-day -day is he gets on the Internet, and he t talks to young boys. He travels around the country with a camera taking pictures of them at events and then posts them on the website that he works for. Sounds like the same guy who's in charge of our social networking or a pedophile. Well, it's time to find out who did Sundance ambush. Let's see. No. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> it was Lynn's. Poor Lynn's Panther. Obviously. Yeah. Uh, so apparently, according to this piece of paper I have, it's, uh, we have a winner, and the winner is TLR Resistance. So All congratulations. Right. Congratulations, right. buddy. Winner of the Astro A30s. He's getting speaker tags and a mix amp as well. The whole Cape Kang Badoo. Awesome Whoa, giveaway. I can't even talk. Anyway, guys, <laughs> congratulations to Resistance and all of tonight's winners. Thank you all for watching. I know Shibby and I had a great time putting this show together. We hope you enjoyed watching it. While you're still on Twitter, add me. I'm MLG Puckett. MLG Shibby. Pretty simple stuff. And... MLG son. Nah, don't add son Nance MLG. <laughs> He's pretty cool, dude. He's already got it. <laughs> All right, well, finally tonight we leave you, as always, with more stuff we found on the computer. Good night, everybody. Don't